Welcome to the Institute for Human Services. My name is Belinda Hode and I am the Medicaid Compliance Officer. Today you are joining me to participate in orientation and Medicaid compliance training. I will provide you a history and overview of IHS, its programs, and the compliance program. Please ensure that you take the exam at the conclusion of the training. IHS was incorporated as a 501c3 nonprofit organization in 1984 with a sole focus on Steuben County. The needs were outlined for IHS to provide information and referral for human service agencies, reduce duplication of services, and address the ever-challenging transportation needs within Steuben County. Our mission is to improve the quality of life in the Southern Tier by increasing our member agency's capacity for success. In order to accomplish our mission, we are focused on three core areas of capacity building, communication, and collaboration. When we focus on our member agency's capacity, it allows a strong collaborative network to produce results more efficiently than any one agency can produce independently. We are more represented by something that can be referred to as a coordinated agency. We have a few core programs. However, all of our programs coordinate services among IHS to better serve the community. When we think about coordination, we are really thinking about leveraging resources and capacity. IHS coordinated transportation services encompass volunteer drivers, mobility management, non-emergency Medicaid transportation, Steuben County Department of Social Services transportation scheduling, and two-on-one information and referral. The funding for each program boils down to partnerships between local agencies, such as New York State Medicaid, Steuben County Office for the Aging, United Way of the Southern Tier, New York State Department of Transportation, and the Steuben County Department of Social Services. As you can see, all of our programs are intertwined to better serve our member agencies, communities, and stakeholders. On the left, you see a non-provider's view of transportation services when IHS was first asked to implement the Steuben County Transportation Coordinated Committee in 2007. There were many services being offered but many of the services were duplicative because every organization was delivering its own service and supporting its own population. The need for coordination of services, leveraging capacity, and funding were evident. The picture on the right is more representative of the coordination of transportation services that is currently implemented within Steuben County. The providers come to the table to determine how to serve the most people with the resources that we currently have available to our county. 211 Helpline is an information and referral program that currently serves Allegheny, Steuben, Yates, Schuyler, and Chemung counties. The 211 Call Center consists of call center specialists to handle the day to day needs of the five county region that they support. 211 currently serves as the one call, one click center for mobility management and IHS coordinated transportation services. Two one one is an excellent data gathering partner as every call is logged and enables planners to see what the realized needs are within the community. The 2016 contacts are depicted here and as you can see transportation rates in the top three needs categories. The community members in Steuben County face a realized barrier to many activities and services because of the lack of transportation. 211 has the ability to present the collected data to better assist county planners and mobility management understand what the realized needs are within the region. Mobility management is a strategic approach for managing and delivering coordinated transportation services. It emphasizes leveraging the services of multiple transportation providers, making visible improvements to the effectiveness, efficiency, and quality of all transportation services being delivered. By all transportation services being delivered, we're really talking about 
all transportation options, well, whether it be walking, biking, carpooling, public transit, paratransit, car share, or utilizing a taxi. In rural Steuben County, transportation is a top issue, especially for older adults, low-income individuals, and those with disabilities. Public transportation comes from scattered providers reaching only the most populous areas. Human service agencies and volunteer driver programs try to reach the rest. Rural mobility management includes coordinating service promotion and marketing to improve public awareness of available transportation options. Providing a single point of contact for transportation services through 211 helpline. Bringing public and private sectors together and planning by facilitating the Steuben County Coordinated Transportation Advisory Committee. The Southern Tier Rideshare Project is a collaborative initiative between the New York State Department of Transportation, 511 New York, Steuben and Chemung County Mobility Managers. I believe that rideshare is the key to success in supplementing public transportation in rural communities. We just concluded year three of the pilot project. We have approximately 260 community users. In 2017, we will be expanding the Southern Tier Rideshare Program to include five to seven adjoining counties. The Human Services Public Transportation Advisory Committee developed a tri-county map to depict the service area for each transportation provider. The colored lines on the map represent public transportation routes and where they're operating. Upon studying this information, we found that many of the main roadways were being served by public transportation. However, the need for transportation services is still very high. The white space on the map indicates that there are no available transportation services. The question then became, how do we serve the majority of the population in a rural county? It is not affordable or feasible for public transportation providers to serve every community, town, and roadway throughout the county. The white space is served by three volunteer driver programs within Steuben County for non-emergency Medicaid transportation, nutritional, and service-related appointments. The IHS Volunteer Driver Program was initially developed in 2000 in partnership with Steuben County Office for the Aging. The purpose of the development was to assist people with transportation to and from medical, nutritional, and service-related appointments. In 2002, we received United Way funding for clients that were not eligible for Steuben County Office for the Aging funded trips. In 2010, IHS began assisting with Steuben County Department of Social Services trips. In 2013, IHS applied to become a Medicaid transportation provider for Steuben County and implemented the HBSS scheduling software. In 2015, Medical Answering Services requested that IHS consider providing non-emergency Medicaid transportation only in Allegheny, Cattaraugus, and Livingston counties. The IHS Volunteer Driver Program has progressively grown in size and service area. As you can see from the graph, the growth in the number of miles traveled from 2013 to 2016 has been exponential. Between January and October of 2016, our volunteers provided 917,225 miles of non-emergency medical transportation service. This is an amazing number of miles for any volunteer driver program and speaks volume to the dedication and service of our volunteers. IHS provides training to its employees, volunteers, and interns so that we are equipped with the necessary tools to complete assignments in an effective, efficient, and compliant manner. The initial orientation and compliance training is provided to all new employees, volunteers, and interns within 60 days of appointment. On an annual basis, all employees, volunteers, and interns are required to participate in Medicaid compliance annual refresher courses. The annual refreshers may be scheduled with the compliance officer 
or you may participate in our online training course. All employees, governing board, volunteers, and interns that fail to attend the required training will be subject to disciplinary action. The compliance program is built upon laws, regulations, and federal requirements provided by the Office of Medicaid Inspector General. Medicaid is a health care program that assists low-income families or individuals in paying for medical care. Medicaid is funded primarily by the federal government and managed at the state level. The Institute for Human Services has implemented and maintains a compliance program with all required elements as outlined in Social Security Law Section 363D and Part 521 entitled Provider Compliance Programs of Title 18 of the Codes, Rules, and Regulations of the State of New York. IHS, its Board of Directors, Administrators, and Management Teams are committed to delivering quality and efficient patient transportation services to the highest standards of ethical and professional business conduct. Maintaining full compliance with all applicable state and federal laws affecting the delivery and payment of healthcare related transportation services, including those regulations that prohibit fraud, abuse, and waste of healthcare resources, is of the highest priority. The compliance plan is applicable to all billings, payments, medical necessity and quality of care, governance, mandatory reporting, and credentialing. A complete copy of the IHS Compliance Plan can be found on the IHS website under the About Us tab. The Code of Conduct is a set of principles that outlines your responsibilities and guides proper business practices while employed or volunteering at IHS. The Institute for Human Services Governing Board, personnel, volunteers, and interns are committed to professional excellence. All IHS affiliates shall maintain high standards of ethical conduct and will comply with and assist IHS in complying with all applicable laws, regulations, and third-party payer program requirements. The Code of Conduct covers anti-discrimination, anti-retaliation, customer service expectations, financial relationships, claims processing, billing and payments, contract management, confidentiality, reporting violations of all policies, procedures, laws, and regulations. The Code of Conduct details have been reviewed with you in person and a signed copy may be located in your personnel file. As a Medicaid service provider, it is our responsibility to work diligently to identify possible fraud, abuse, and waste risk areas. The risk areas identified by IHS are documentation requirements, billing errors, exclusions, and trip log errors. We have already discovered what Medicaid is. Now I'd like to explain what Medicaid fraud is and how we can recognize it. Healthcare fraud is not a victimless crime. It impacts all taxpayers, recipients, and providers. Fraud, abuse, and waste is defined as accepting gratuities from a vendor of any kind, including, but not limited to, free service, steering Medicaid transportation to a specific vendor for any reason, knowingly dismissing a vendor's action of providing a higher level of transportation than what is needed, a peer supervisor or manager requesting you to perform a non-compliant function even if you do not carry out the request sharing personal information of a recipient for personal benefit or with any non-IHS employee not involved in the recipient's care and not within the hours of scheduled work, engaging in inclusive agreements with other vendors, providing inaccurate codes for service, and falsifying trip logs. Please do not feel that you have to know if the activity is fraud, abuse, or waste to report it. If you have concerns, it is your responsibility to consult with your compliance officer. The compliance officer will investigate your complaint thoroughly and produce a plan of corrective action. Your compliance officer will have the ability to answer all of your compliance related questions.
The Institute for Human Services employees, governing board, volunteers, and interns shall comply with the requirements of the Medicaid program. The policies and procedures of the Institute for Human Services compliance program and the code of conduct. The policies, procedures, and disciplinary policies apply to all IHS affiliates. Progressive disciplinary action will be imposed if any investigation reveals that any affiliate participated in, directed, or coerced noncompliant behavior. The Institute for Human Services will attest to its billing only when there is sufficient documentation to verify that transportation was provided to a medical appointment. Billing for services without sufficient documentation will result in disciplinary action. Now that we have learned what fraud, abuse, and waste of Medicaid funding is, we also need to learn how to report fraudulent activities. As representatives of the Institute for Human Services, we must practice honesty and integrity in fulfilling our responsibilities and comply with all applicable laws and regulations. The whistleblower policy is intended to encourage and enable employees and others to raise serious concerns internally so that the Institute for Human Services can address and correct inappropriate conduct and actions. It is the responsibility of all governing board members, officers, employees, volunteers, and interns to report concerns about violations of the Institute's code of conduct or suspected violations of law or regulation that govern the Institute's operations. It is contrary to the values of the Institute for Human Services for anyone to retaliate against any individual who in good faith reports an ethics violation or suspected violation of law. Examples of these complaints include complaints of discrimination, suspected fraud, or suspected violation of any regulation. An employee who retaliates against someone who has reported a violation in good faith is subject to discipline up to and including termination of employment or volunteer assignment. The Institute for Human Services has an open door policy and suggests that employees share questions, concerns, suggestions, or complaints with their supervisor. If you are not comfortable speaking with your supervisor or you are not satisfied with your supervisor's response, you are encouraged to speak with any member of the management team. Supervisors and managers are required to report complaints or concerns about suspected ethical and legal violations in writing to the compliance officer, who has the responsibility to investigate all reported complaints. Violations or suspected violations may be submitted on a confidential basis by the complainant. Reports of violations or suspected violations will be kept confidential to the extent possible consistent with the need to conduct an adequate investigation. All complainants are expected to comply with a compliance officer throughout the investigation. Anyone filing a written complaint concerning a violation or suspected violation must be acting in good faith and have reasonable grounds for believing the information disclosed indicates a violation. Any allegations that prove not to be substantiated and which prove to have been made maliciously or knowingly to be false will be viewed as misconduct. The Institute for Human Services prides itself on delivery of personalized, compassionate, and professional transportation services. All volunteer drivers are trained in HIPAA compliance, have their motor vehicle report reviewed, participate in the LENS program, are cleared through the Medicaid exclusion list database, and have a background check completed prior to accepting assignments. The Institute for Human Services only accepts Medicaid transportation trips for medical answering services, the New York State Transportation Broker. The Institute for Human Services is prohibited from accepting Medicaid trips from any other source. All trips assigned to the volunteer driver by the Institute for Human Services employees will be reimbursable. It is not permissible for a volunteer driver to schedule appointments directly with the client. Additionally, if a driver has the need to cancel a scheduled transport, the driver is required to call IHS Coordinated Transportation to cancel the trip. It is not permissible for drivers to trade trips or ask another driver to take their trip. All drivers are required to accurately complete a trip log prior to and after each trip. 
For billing purposes, it is imperative that the trip log contain the full printed name and signature of the driver providing the transportation, attesting that the reference trip was actually completed on the date. Your driver's license number, your vehicle license plate number, the Medicaid enrollee's name and Medicaid identification number, the date of the transportation, both the origin of the trip and the time of pickup, both the destination of the trip and the time of drop-off. The reimbursement forms will be verified with the payment amount at the transportation office. Trip logs must only be completed for authorized trips that occur to IHS's direction in order to be reimbursable. The Institute for Human Services is committed to maintaining the integrity of its business operations and the anonymity of good faith reporters. It is our responsibility to report suspected fraud, abuse, and waste. The Institute for Human Services has established three methods for reporting compliance issues. The lockbox maintained by the compliance officer is located on the second floor of the IHS office building. There's a fillable form on the IHS website that can be filled out an email to compliance at ihsnet.org or completed, printed, and labeled confidential and mailed to IHS at the address shown above. All complaints, records, and reports will be kept confidential as permitted in the course of a thorough investigation. The Institute for Human Services is committed to achieving 100% compliance. The internal audits are designed to detect and correct errors in a timely manner. The compliance officer shall perform monthly internal audits, a program assessment, and sign OMEG program compliance assurances annually. The audits will consist of examining the volunteer driver tracking spreadsheet to ensure that the required information is updated when it is due, as well as gathering a sample of trip logs for review for errors and legibility. All errors and illegible entries must be voided. An audit report with recommendations will be provided to the executive director and the volunteer driver program director on a quarterly basis. Upon receipt of any report of suspected fraud, abuse, or waste, the compliance officer will conduct an investigation, complete a plan of corrective action, and implement policy changes to prevent a founded reoccurrence. At this time, I'd like to thank you for attending the Institute for Human Services Orientation and Compliance Training. Please direct all questions, comments, and concerns to Belinda Hode at the Institute for Human Services. Have a wonderful day, and please do not forget to take the compliance quiz to complete this training. Please click on the link and be redirected to the compliance quiz to complete your training. Thank you.